Hello, welcome back to another Coffee with Carl. You know, I really hope that you enjoyed last week's episode with Eugenia. I, I still am not able to say that correctly. Is it Ohenia? Is it Ow? Oh, I, I don't I don't know. I don't know. My my English mouth won't say it, my American tongue. But either way, uh, I had a blast. I thought she was just a lot of fun. It was refreshing to have somebody come in and tell me about their culture and I, I love that stuff. So it was just, for me, it was especially enjoyable. You'll be seeing more of her as well because we did a whole video about her boot making and all that stuff, which will actually go on the main channel. I know that this channel was really supposed to be for more long format stuff, but that video will be on the main channel since it's about boots and since it's kind of like her first introduction to the world of uh, you weird boot people. Not me, of course. <laughs> How are you doing? I hope that you all are well. Um, one thing I always try to keep in mind is that my audience is primarily men between the ages of 18 and, say, 50, right? So, you know, we're in this interesting spot where, you know, there's a lot of variation of life experiences. And I want to make sure that the people who are listening are taking stock of their their their, their own mental health, right? I mean, I know that that sounds, maybe it sounds a little woo-woo, but the fact of the matter is, is that Suicide is an epidemic among people of my age group in particular, middle-aged men, um, that nobody seems to really want to talk about. And I don't think there's any real nefarious reason as to why that is. I think that more or less it's just nobody could figure out a good answer. And so uh, in my own small way, I want to just be able to reach out to you and say that I hope that you're doing well. I hope that you're talking to friends and family and checking in with people and I hope that everybody has somebody that you can go to if things just aren't good you know what I mean just having somebody you could actually go to and say you know man I just need to talk and um and also on the flip side being that for someone else you know a lot of times it's it's easy to say oh you know focus inward and try to figure out what's going on with yourself but Sometimes you need to be that for somebody else as well. So if you are in a mentally um, stable position and you can provide that for somebody else, I think that's great. I always I use the analogy of, uh, you know, when the, the oxygen masks drop down in a crash scenario in an airplane, they always say affix your own oxygen mask before assisting others. And I guess it kind of goes the same where it's a good idea to make sure that you're in a good place before you try to help somebody else. But Oftentimes, all we really need is just somebody to listen, um, because as men, often we are just expected to handle stuff and uh, and just always have it under control. And that's not always easy to do. So please keep stock of yourself, your mental health and uh, how you're doing. And please, you know, make sure you have that person in your life who you can reach out to and just say, hey, I'm not OK. And I need to talk to somebody. I just think that 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 can sometimes help. I don't know. I'm not a, I'm an electrician. What do I know? But take care of yourself. I would miss you if you were gone. So anyway, let's get into the news. By the way, anybody notice the, uh, the banner over here? This is actually one of a couple of new pieces of merch that are coming out. This, and I have a tin cup, a Coffee with Carl tin cup, which is, uh, originally we had thought that it would be ceramic. And if you were one of the people who bought an original, it was ceramic. But now working with exclusive for my merchandise, I actually have a lot more control over what we make, which is really, really cool. So I thought, all right, well, you know, instead of doing a ceramic cup, what if we do a tin cup? Now, I know tin has its like it has its drawbacks, right? It doesn't hold heat as well. It, um, you know, they, they, they're just a little more finicky sometimes, you know, and it's it could be. Whatever. It has its, uh, its pros and cons. But my thought was the big, big benefit of a tin cup is that it doesn't break. So if you want to bring this with you out on life's adventures, camping, hiking, uh, whatever it is, throw it, lash it to the side of your backpack and go off an adventure. Have fun. You don't have to worry about smashing and ruining your time. And I hope, I really hope that people will do that. Uh, if you do end up getting one of these mugs, please head out on an adventure, do something cool, and send me some pictures. I would love to see that. But right behind me here, we have a banner, and I put one on my main set, and I have one here on my Coffee with Carl set. 
Because as I touched on earlier, I think that, you know, we can get wrapped up in the whole idea of consumerism and new stuff. And that's exciting. And that's what I love, too, which is why I make these these videos. But let's make sure that we get out there and actually enjoy life while we're wearing our stuff. Right. It, it makes no sense to buy all this cool stuff and sit at home not doing anything. Right. So get out there and enjoy life. And that's what that's a constant reminder of. So I have it here. I have one over on my main set. Basically, anywhere that I am up, upstairs in my studio, I, it's within uh, uh, my sight. And I hope that if you get one of these as well, they're really affordable, too. I mean, like, they're actually really pretty cool. They have these antique brass grommets, and they're like heavy-duty canvas, almost like a sail or something. I hope that it's a constant reminder to you to get out there, to hug your kid, to go and play on the floor with Legos, to get out and go for a hike, uh, whatever it is that you enjoy doing that gives you life and fulfillment, right there. I hope that that does that for you at least once, and in that way, it'll be worth it. I know I said we're getting to the news, and we're getting to it, all right? Will you relax? My God, here we go. Okay, first thing, 16, 1620 Workwear came out with their lightweight Nyko hooded long sleeve shirt. Now, it's 78 bucks, which is expensive. If you haven't felt their Nyko fabric, though, I have two t-shirts, maybe three, uh, one that actually was given me to me from the guy from Blackline when I did that interview, and he had his logo and stuff printed on it. It's the softest shirt I think that I have. It's really stretchy. That Nyko fabric is really something cool. Now this is a long sleeve shirt, and what I like about this, and it's very timely, similar to this this uh, sweatshirt I'm, I'm wearing here. I'm going to give you some details on this in a second because this isn't even available to buy yet. But Carhartt sent me an early one, which is pretty cool. Um, but like this, this is a great option going into the warmer months. So it's a lighter weight, uh, you know, it's, it's basically a sheer, it's a t-shirt, right? With a hood and long sleeves. What that does, it'll give you a little bit extra sun protection, which is really cool. And it could also just act as a great mid-layer. I think these are, I was actually surprised that there aren't more really light sweatshirts or t-shirts, heavy t-shirts that are used as mid-layers. It seems like a no-brainer. Oftentimes you either have to go full-on big baggy hoodie that kind of makes you look like an amorphous blob, or you know you have to go with something like a like a technical mid layer. This is a great option, and I think that hopefully we're we're going to see more of these come out. Looks like actually it's available in a couple of different colors. Uh, you have your black, you have your granite, you have white, of course, limestone, and hunter green. So you know all very very masculine, very um, staple colors, right? So anyway. Uh, 1620, one of my favorite brands. Love these guys. They're really, really cool. And the two guys behind it are also great, which always makes me appreciate a company even more when there's actually people behind it, not just like a board. Uh, and, and I love that. So anyway, new stuff from 1620. Speaking of getting out and doing stuff, MSR, here's a company I haven't talked about in a while. I actually have two pairs of their snowshoes, which are, in my opinion, some of the best. I haven't checked on what their new snowshoes are like because these things have lasted so long and haven't worn out that I don't need to buy another pair. But I have a pair, my wife has a pair. She used it, you know, sometimes, but I, I used to love snowshoeing. And I actually have a couple of crazy stories. Uh, one in particular, which I'm gonna tell you about right now because what the hell, it's Coffee with Carl. So this is my time and uh, uh, to talk to you at length about stuff. On the main channel, I edit stuff down all the time. Let me tell you about this one quick story because it's actually, it scared the hell out of me. I had a bulldog named Henry. Henry was extremely energetic. For a bulldog, that's pretty rare. I thought he was going to be like this lazy, snoring kind of thing. Uh, no, no. Henry had to be walked at least twice a day. So I would take him on all these different adventures, and I was always looking for different trails to take him on that were interesting and stimulating so that he would just chill out. Because sometimes Henry could be dangerous when he had a lot of energy. So I was heading out snowshoeing one day around this area called Miles of Ledges. And what it was was a mile loop that went around a small pond and then came back. But the snow was extremely deep this year. It was really, we had a big snow uh, and it was like, it was great because people were staying off the trails, which made for great snowshoeing. So I grabbed my backpack. I always have a couple of essentials in there. I headed out with Henry in tow and we, we were going. And it was great because he was struggling to get through. You know, so was I. And it was a great workout. It was really, really great. So I was following the trail. But as you go, the trail markings on the trees could sometimes be farther apart. And since I couldn't see any sort of beaten down path, it was all just fresh snow, I ended up getting a little bit off the trail. And I had my eye on the pond since I knew that we were going around the pond. But for a little bit of time, the trail went behind a little hill and I couldn't see the pond anymore. 
And so I finally came up to where I thought the trail was, and I looked over and I saw a body of water. And I said, okay, well, I guess I'm not quite around the pond yet. This pond was way longer, several miles up. Now, of course, it's the wintertime. It's starting to get dark. And I'm going, oh, no, what am I going to do? Now, I'm out in Burlington, which is a part of Connecticut that's pretty wooded. Uh, one of those areas where they don't really have a police presence. You know, the state police cover it, but they don't really. And I'm thinking, oh, geez, am I going to have to call somebody? Thank God I have my cell phone. Am I going to have to call somebody and they have to helicopter me out of here? I got the dog. What am I going to do? Um, and so I sat down. The dog sat with me. He gave him a drink. Uh, it was actually, I don't know why, but I had some jelly beans, a little package of those jelly belly jelly beans. It was enough to, uh, you know, I, I always want to keep some high calorie stuff with me. So I usually have trail mix. I have jelly beans. I have water, of course, stuff that can give me calories if I need it. And of course, if you're working hard and it's cold, you're burning calories like crazy. So I was out there, had a couple of jelly beans and I'm thinking to myself, all right, what's the best way to go? Do I follow my tracks back or can I go across this pond, which was frozen? I looked at Google Earth. Uh, I didn't have great service, but I had enough that I could get on Google Earth and see where I was in proximity and see how much I overshot. I even had like a hiking app that showed me where the trail was and where I was, which was not the right place. And it was a scary moment actually considering, do I call for rescue or do I try to make my way back? At this point, I am spent. I mean, if you've never snowshoed, it's really much more difficult than hiking. When you lift up your, your snowshoe, you always have a bunch of weight from that snow pressing down on it. And my legs were really tired, but I'm like, you know what? Let's just see what we can do. Um, and I started walking back across the frozen pond. I, I tried to let Henry stay far on his leash so that if I went through, he wouldn't go through with me. And I have my snowshoes on, so I'm thinking at least I'm dispersing my weight somewhat. It was actually pretty safe, wasn't an issue, and I headed, be now since I'm on the ice, I mean I could beeline right back to the trailhead and where my car was, and that's what I did, I went right straight for it, uh, it's, it got dark, by the time I reached the car it was pitch black, got in the car with the dog, kind of like, whew, oh my god, I can't believe that, won't do that again, got back home, and he zonked out by the fire like I've never seen him sleep before. And those MSR snowshoes, they stuck with me the whole time. They, did ne they never failed me, never let me down once. I can't say enough about them. So MSR is always a company that I look to for just top of the line stuff and uh, things that just don't fail. So that brings me to their titanium cookware. This is called their Titan set, and it's been re-engineered, like engineered, right? So a lot of their stuff has been updated. So they have a kettle. They have uh, a couple of different sizes of kettle. They actually have a, a mug, a cup, you know, that has the folding sides on it where you can, you can use it as a, a normal coffee cup, and they'll fold up for packing uh, a double wall mug. So you have an insulated mug there, a couple of utensils. More or less, they just have a bunch of this great titanium cookware. And it is expensive, but it's not as much as titanium used to be. Titanium... Uh, it's I don't know if it's come down in price if it's more readily available if the raw material is cheaper but this stuff used to be like insanely expensive we're talking about for the large kettle which is 1400 milliliters 70 bucks uh that's that's crazy it used to be that something like this would be several hundred from what I remember um and of course if weight is a big concern for you titanium is a pretty much what you're going to want to go with. So they have a whole set here that's been reinvented. Looks awesome. I actually really like that double wall mug. That looks really cool. And they're all raw titanium too. So they have that great sort of dull metallic look to them. Beautiful stuff. Red Clouds Collective, the very expensive workwear brand, kind of in the same vein as Grease Point Workwear and Chiano Farmer Denim, Red Clouds Collective has always done a lot with waxed canvas. And as far as I remember, they have one of the only examples of overalls, uh, wax canvas overalls, not coveralls, as we discovered last week. But Red Clouds Collective has come out with several shirts. The one that I want to talk about here, now this just came out too. This is like right away, uh, you got to jump on it because it's a limited thing. It came out yesterday. I'm filming this on a Saturday. You're going to watch it on a Wednesday. It came out last Friday, right? So this just came out yesterday. 150 bucks for this, which is the Witham work shirt. It's a flannel shirt in a very handsome green color. I got to say, I really think they did a great job with this colorway. It's subtle. It's very, very nice looking. And again, from a small company, a lot of times 
if, if you're like me, you like to go with a smaller company, at least you know where your dollars are going. And uh, 150 bucks is not cheap, but, you know, for a made in the USA small shop flannel shirt, that's not outside the realm of, of you know, normal, I guess. If you're talking about like a $360 iron heart, right? More than double this. You know, I wouldn't say that's more than double the shirt. But anyway, looks really cool. I did not pick one up. I can't give you a reason why, but I haven't gotten one. And I don't think I'm going to get one, actually. So, uh, But it is available and several other of their shirts as well. Really cool stuff. They came with the camo one. There's a few other different types down here. So if you want to go and check out their With Them Work shirts, go for it. Oris redid or refreshed their Aquas, which if, if you're familiar, this is the watch that I wear almost all the time. If I'm not wearing this, I'm wearing my Apple Watch Ultra, which I like for, you know, it's tracking and, and workout stuff that I, I, I use it for every single day. Love it. But if I'm not wearing that, I'm wearing this. And this is the watch that I bought years ago and never, ever wanted another one. I wanted something that was interesting, different. Actually, originally, I wanted the Hulk Rolex, but that was just like crazy expensive. And the whole idea of wearing a Rolex to me, you know, it comes with a certain... I don't know. I'm not sure if I want to be a Rolex guy. You know what I mean? So this was a great option. The green, I thought it was very interesting that uh, Oris has a fantastic uh, history and stuff like that. And on my Discord, somebody tagged me and said, hey, did you see that Oris is refreshing the Aquas, which is what this model is. And the one that I continue to love. I use this thing all the time. And they did. But I got to tell you, even as a guy who looks at his Aquas every day, it's very difficult for me to tell the difference here. Now, I guess they've slimmed down the dial a little bit. Uh, the hands, rather, not that the dial. The dial face, I guess some of the things have changed on there. The lugs are a little bit different, whereas the ones on my version were very chunky. And actually, mine is like the second version uh, of the Aquas. I think they refreshed it once before, maybe five, six years ago. And that's when I got this one. Um, and then they refreshed it again. So I think I have, you know, from one of the, the re refreshes as well and actually really liked it and the movement that came with it and stuff. So I love this watch. I also am very surprised at how much they cost now. Uh, they're like over four grand, which was, I mean, when I bought mine, I can't remember, but I had paid nowhere near that. And, uh, you know, for a watch that looks very much the same, uh, I, I just, you know, whatever. I, then again, I do love the watch. I mean, it's great. So I wear it all the time. Certainly got my money out of it. Uh, my money's worth rather, but, uh, you know, did it need to be refreshed? I don't know. I mean, it brought it back to the top of mind for a lot of people, so that's probably why they did it. But either way, love this watch. If you are looking for an interesting yet, um, you know, kind of that great combination of rugged and refined, I can't say enough. And if you do get the one with the vanilla aroma strap, oh, that smell is fantastic. Whites seem to be setting their sights on Viberg with their Stevens dress cap boot, a sleek boot, no doubt about it. And from what I understand, this is actually a different last. So they were able to combine some different things here. So this is on the 5050 Arch Ease last. It says here, the Stevens is undeniably our most refined hand-sewn constructed boot to date. Built on the all-new 5050 Archies last, we can now offer a more sleek toe profile without sacrificing the traditional arch support that you'll find with other lasts such as the 55. While the dressier silhouette is perfect for your evening occasion, don't be fooled, this boot is built tough to last. So it's a five inch tall boot. It has hand sewn construction. It looks really, really good, I gotta say. And, and you know, a lot of people will say that for 720 bucks, you're still getting a pretty good bargain. Uh, to me though, that I, you know, there are whites fans out there and I love whites. I actually think that, you know, they've done a great job of sort of staying out of the BS that a lot of these other companies have gotten themselves into and just sort of maintain the course, whether they're owned by a Tokyo based, uh, you know, firm or not, that might bother you. It may not, I don't know, but I like the brand and I think this is a cool looking boot. And if you can if you could stomach that price point, I can guarantee that it's going to be spectacular. But again, they're definitely going after the Viberg type of people with this. And I would say that, you know, White's finishing, while it's not the worst of the Pacific Northwest that I've ever seen, it's not of the level of even a Grant Stone, typically. I got to tell you, their stitch per inch and their precision is, is good, but it's not the best. And so, actually, to be fair, I think that Frank's stitching is the best. Of all I've seen... Um, Westco, Whites, Knicks, JK, 
they all have some wonkiness to them. I've seen some stitching come out, come out of all of them that look pretty weird. But whoever's doing the stitching over at Frank's, because they're a much smaller company, uh, is doing a really, really great job. And so whoever's running that stitching machine over there is doing uh, uh, awesome. But either way, they don't really have anything like this either. And the hand-sewn thing is something that's very specific to white. So if this is your thing, go for it. I think it's a lot of money for that boot, but uh, some people are going to buy it, no doubt. Up next, we have a ranch jacket. This thing is really, really cool. It's by Edwin Japan, which is a company I'm not really familiar with, but I saw this and I was like, yeah, that looks pretty good. I saw it on the Brooklyn Clothing website and I, I don't know, something about it struck me. I think it's those copper snaps with the black material. I just think that looks really good. It's very interesting and different. It's only $282 for a Japanese made jacket. That's actually pretty damn good. So it says Edwin's ranch jacket is designed for a timeless aesthetic incorporating design cues from different vintage denim jacket patterns and featuring a unique raw unwashed finish that will age and develop some rich character with time. It is meticulously constructed from a beautiful inky black dead stock Japanese selvage denim known and renowned for its exceptional quality and durability. So these are actually Edwin brass buttons. They look like copper to me. Uh, but that just might be the way that they're shot here, or maybe they have like a, a, a surface finish on them. But either way, I think this really is a, a cool piece, and I actually think that's a pretty good price for what you're getting. We talked about the Payday brand last week, and this reminds me a lot of that, in that it's an unlined, very interesting denim jacket. The Payday brand, I still maintain, is a little bit too expensive. And I think maybe they're they're finding their footing. They're going to get it, but it's going to take them a little bit of time. And while brands like this are out there that you can snap up for under $300, this is a great option. And uh, it has a lot of really cool details, too. How's the fit on it? I mean, if it's Japanese, I would imagine, unfortunately, it's probably pretty slim. Some brands are a little bit better, like UES, tend to have a little bit more room. Uh, but other brands are very, very slim. So... Make sure you check the size chart before you buy something like this. But I think that's actually a pretty damn good price for a pretty damn good piece. And I want to talk to you about two different things right now, real quick, that are sort of the same. <laughs> We're getting into the warmer weather. And with the warmer weather, you have to start reevaluating your wardrobe, right? I mean, like the heavy denim, the heavy leather, the boots, all that stuff like that don't really play well on an 85 degree day when it's humid, right? Now, um, I have gone with some lighter denim, not white. I think white denim, you look like a painter or something, right? Nothing against painters, but um, I don't want to look like one. And so what I did is I went with like a natural or an acru or a very light khaki. Those types of colors play well in the UV light. So I have two here that I wanted to tell you about. The first one is from Samurai and it looks really, really good. This is a, a bit of a heavier denim though. This is 18 ounce, but if you, some people like that, right? Some people like the heavier denim and uh, in a lighter color, it's gonna be much easier to wear during the summer. You don't have, I mean, when you wear dark colors, you could feel the sun just beating on those things and it doesn't feel pleasant at all. Samurai does things, you know, they're usually up in the top companies that people talk about, you know, with Ironheart, with Momotaro, with all those other very, very high end companies out there. I think that, you know, if you're going to go with something that's very, very special, go with this. This is called the Samurai Zero Fabric Cotton Project S710SC, and they're in the A Crew Slim Straight. So, interesting. Uh, they look really good, I got to say. Will I buy them? No. I think it's uh, pretty high price but uh yeah they look really really good i don't know they're 375 bucks but the ones that i have which i like are actually from kato brand and kato brand is is very interesting i think that they don't get enough credit out there really they're the only companies that are doing stretch four-way stretch selvage denim they're made in the usa and very Japanese inspired. And so what I mean by that is oftentimes the Japanese stuff is, is it has a great finish. Um, they use very interesting materials. Their quality is usually top notch. It's hard to, to punch a hole in Japanese products. They just do a great job. These, this is a, a Kato kind of takes that same formula and applies it to an American made denim brand. And again, with that four way stretch makes a huge difference, especially when it gets warm out. This is $268, which again, isn't cheap, right? But still uh, much less than the 370 bucks of the, of the Samurai. This is called the Pen Slim. It's in their silver, gray, white, 14 ounce selvage. So a little bit lighter. I don't have this particular one. As a matter of fact, I don't like their slim. I like their straight. I found that straight cuts for me work better. I'm, um, you know, a, a, I mean, I'm an average height, 
but I'm kind of a stocky guy and I, all my stuff fits well. I never liked that look of a very slim jean. I think that look is kind of going away anyway, but I usually will wear what they call the hammer, which is the straight cut. And I think they even have these in that. But either way, this one here is really cool and it has that sort of silvery kind of look to it. Again, not white. White can look a little weird, but um, just off-white or eggshell or a little bit different. Cream, whatever you want to call it. I just think they did a great job. I love Kato. I always check Kato's website for new stuff. They even have one that's called like Old Blue out there that looks awesome. It almost looks like a postman type of blue. I mean, you could spend a long time on their website. Just be careful, too. Their tops are typically very, very slim. But uh, if you could figure out your size with Kato, they're one of those companies that you could easily just go to for your entire wardrobe. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was going to tell you about this sweatshirt here. Now, this is actually from an upcoming Carhartt release. I don't know when it's going to be coming out, but they're doing some garment dyed stuff. So I think they're doing their K87 uh, and this this traditional sweatshirt. Now, this is not their heavy, heavy sweatshirt. This is almost more of a and you can even see how the hood falls, right? Like a lot of times the very heavy sweatshirts, the hood kind of puffs up. And this is almost really almost like more of a heavy T-shirt type of material. But I love it, especially for this time of year. And since it's garment dyed, even the patch is garment dyed. So if you like Carhartt stuff, but you don't really like all the branding, this blends right in. And I think it, it's just a different look. It's really cool. Garment dyeing tends to settle in the low parts too. And it tends to be a little bit like lighter in the high parts. So it, it gives you a really cool variation of tones and color and saturation. And uh, I don't really don't, I don't know what colors they're going to be coming out with. This sort of sage green was the one that I liked. And uh, Carhartt, and you know, I have a great relationship with the people over there. And when they have new stuff and early stuff that they can send over for me to check out, they will. And they've been so generous with that. So that's why, you know, say what you want about the brand. I think that they're, uh, you know, they do some great things. They don't do everything right, but um, they've been spectacular to work with and very, very cool people. So again, a lot of times my own biases just come from people who I like and, and companies that I like to work with because... I'm a relationship guy. I like the relationship that I can build with people. And uh, to me, that goes a lot further. And I think it's a more honest type of relationship rather than you could pay me and I will sp I will endorse this product. And then you know, I'll probably be endorsing your competitor down the line. They also appreciate the fact that I have to be you know, transparent and straightforward. So if I'm comparing their stuff with something else, let's say I'm comparing 1620 and Carhartt. I like both those companies. I like both the people behind those companies. I have to be objective and show like exactly what it is. I'll give my feelings on it, but you know, I have to be fair and I can't, um, I can't sway that. My, my number one responsibility is to the viewer and uh, making sure that I give you accurate information, no matter what my relationship with the company is. So um, either way, this is coming out soon. And I got to tell you, I like it so much. And I know it's a limited thing. I might just get a couple more because I really like it. It's it's great. So anyway, uh, these will be coming out. Keep your eye out on the Carhartt website. So that's it. Another Coffee with Carl in the books. If you haven't already, please sign up for the newsletter. That way all this stuff comes straight to your inbox. You don't have to hear me blah, blah, blah about my you know silly stories and stuff like that. You can get right to the meat and potatoes of the thing. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great week and I'll see you next time.